In this video, I'm checking out two lights from Xi'an's Molus range, the G60 and X100. They're tiny but powerful lights that I picked up recently and have been so impressed with them that I thought it'd be cool to show you guys. Of course, I check out the features, the build quality, the user experience, and of course, I like balanced reviews, so there will be pros and cons coming up. If you're new around here, I'm Harv, and I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel. So consider subscribing. I always get straight to the good stuff on these videos. And as ever, I've timestamped everything in this video, so you can just skip to the bit you want. I'm giving away this X100 plus some accessories like this cute little softbox and I'll be doing that via my Patreon. Any funds from Patreon that I get I use to buy gear and then I review them and then give them away to my backers so if that's of interest do check it out everything is linked in the description box below. So what are these? Well the Jean, yes apparently that is how it's pronounced, Molus range are designed to be small, lightweight, easy to position and pack a surprising punch when it comes to the power side of things. Let me show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the tech specs of these two products. Firstly, the size, and you can see they are tiny. The G60 is definitely more kind of cube-shaped. It's not that much bigger than something like a Rubik's Cube. And the X100 reminds me more of something like a compact camera or something like that. Weight-wise, they're both very light. The G60 at 300 grams and the X100 at 385. Power-wise, there's no surprises here. It's 60 watts and 100 watts. Kill surprise. And then the brightness, and this is without a reflector, so just the bare bulb. The G60 is 2,376 lux at one meter, and the X100, 3,881 lux at one meter again. In terms of the color accuracy, you can see they both score extremely well. These scores are more than enough to keep up with professional lights. And finally, they have the same color temperature range from 2700 Kelvin to 6500. That's a good, useful range. You can also control multiple Molus lights via their ZY Vega app, which you can see here, and it uses Bluetooth, so you don't need Wi-Fi or anything like that. And this is super handy. I think they have to do this. Every light company has to have kind of their version of this now since Aperture brought in the Sidus Link, which is just, you know, very uh, appreciated throughout the industry. And here you can see it working beautifully. I've only got it connected to the X100 at the moment. And as you can see, I've got really kind of accurate control of the brightness and color temperature, as well as access to a few presets. If I had the G60 connected, you'd see it here. And of course I could control all of them at once. Super cool. These lights have Jun's proprietary ZY mount for mounting light modifiers. I can't blame them for this as these are compact lights that suit compact modifiers. However, if you want to, you can get a Bowens mount adapter, which just unlocks a whole world of different accessories. If you're not familiar with a Bowens mount, it's think aperture light dome fitting. It's kind of prosumer up to professional level and um, that's really handy. Both of these Molus lights have a live mode, which just means that you can control multiple lights from the app. And the X100 has a music mode, which reacts to transients when playing music, which is cool. This means you could, in theory, set them up to film something like a music video, stick them in music mode, and you could get some pretty cool results. I briefly touched on the accessories for these lights before, but you know, they've got lots basically. There's a diffusion dome. I, I already mentioned this cool, uh, you know, sort of light box diffuser thing, which is really cool. And of course there's the Bowens mount adapter, which I already mentioned, and that just unlocks you know, everything basically that you could attach to these. Specifically for the X100, you can get a detachable battery grip and this just slots in and gives you an extra half an hour of runtime, which, you know, is nice in a pinch, but it's not that long really. I, I wouldn't want to rely on this, you know, in case things just take longer than I am expecting them to. So I'll be sticking with you know, mains power. Next on to build quality, and whilst there's quite a bit of plastic used in the construction of these units, I don't see them as being poorly constructed at all. In fact, I actually think this is one of their strengths. In particular, the styling of the G60, I just think is outstanding. It looks like some kind of special edition mini red cinema camera. And if you've ever played the game Mirror's Edge, this completely reminds me of the color scheme from that game. The kind of the bleach white, the black, and then a block 
uh, bold colour. I think it looks excellent. You know, let me know if you've played that and if it reminds you of that same thing. Aside from the looks, Xi'an do have a pretty good reputation these days for build quality. Uh, I actually use the, one of the Weebill gimbals and I love it. I just think it's brilliantly made. Xi'an talk a lot about their cooling system on their website for these lights. It uses a system called Dynavort, which employs some clever methods of channeling airflow to keep things cool and quiet. And I have to say, I think it works pretty damn well. Since I started using these, I haven't noticed the fans come on at all, but then I live in England, so, you know. Um, so I think probably if, you, if you're if you using these in uh, an environment that's particularly hot, they, you might notice them um, coming on, but even then, it's a just a very soft whir and not very noticeable at all. Next on to the user experience, and these are extremely easy to use, and I doubt you'll need the manual at all. I like that you can rotate the dials to dial in the exact colour temperature and brightness you want, or you can click them to jump to useful increments. I would say it's good to temper your expectations when it comes to the brightness. These are small lights, you know, that are kind of just great for many reasons, but just don't expect them to be just blindingly bright. I don't want to see people in the comments saying things like, yeah, but it's not as bright as X, you know, Aperture 120D Mark II, because yeah, of course they're not. But in saying that, when I got them, when I plugged them in, I was kind of surprised, given the size of them, how bright they were. So you're probably wondering what these actually look like in use. Well, right now I'm using my normal setup. This is, uh, up here I've got my key light, which is an Aperture 600D with a big light dome. It gives me plenty of power and lots of diffusion. So what if I was to switch that for the X100, for example? And this is what it looks like. It's, as you can tell, uh, it's a much smaller source of light with a lot less diffusion. So that's why it looks a bit more, kind of, a bit more like a spotlight. And, um, but you know, it's not on full power and you know, it's a kind of brighter beam because of the, you know, the less diffusion. So I think it's on about 30% at the moment. So, you know, it's got some power, albeit my, uh, my 600D, I keep pretty low because, you know, that thing is ridiculous. So what I can do is I can make some tweaks to my other lights and maybe my camera settings and see if I can get something, you know, more pleasing. Let's see what it looks like. And there we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? I've lowered the power of the Molus X100 and I've brought up the power of my fill light a little bit. I've opened up my aperture a little bit on my camera. It's kind of passable. This is nowhere near as soft as I would like, but in a pinch, you know, it, it could work. You could add up, you could maybe put something like a silk in front of it and it work. It might work, you know, quite nicely to, uh, to make it more diffused. So it's pretty good. Next, I wanted to compare a couple of the different light modifiers and this is just with the bare bulb. Don't do this. So I switched to the light dome and way better, much better diffusion, but I'm sure you've noticed it's a way warmer light. That's down to the diffuser itself. So I switched over to the mini light dome and we're back to a cooler light temperature and definitely this is my favorite. A bit too directional, but you know, diffused and definitely dramatic. Next, looking at value for money and alternatives. And I would say these are fair value. You know, it's, the reason I say that is because there's just a lot of competition. Do check the prices, I've linked them below, do, do check the prices in your country, but you know, there, there is just a lot of competition in this price range. First up, and the most obvious choice for me, are some of the Amaran range, which is, if you're not familiar, the kind of more budget lights from Aperture. There's the P60X at £195 at the time of filming, and the 60XS, which is 215 at the time of filming. They're both not quite as small, light, or easy to position compared to these Molus lights. And I know that there are some questionable build quality elements, but they are unquestionably good value. There's lots of other options on the budget end of things. You know, there's lights from companies like Godox, uh, Niwa, companies like that. I'll just, I'll pop a load below for you to have a look at. But in saying that, I still don't think these are a direct comparison to the Molus range, but just because they're trying to do kind of slightly different things. Anyway, next onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Firstly, they are small 
and light as advertised. And because of this, they are so discreet and just easy to position. I find the styling incredible on both, but in particular that G60. They are both surprisingly bright. I mean, they're not gonna blind you or anything, but I was pleasantly surprised. Subjectively, I really like the quality of light you get from these. I also like that you've got the option of having some control via Jun's ZY Vega app. It's not something that I'm gonna be using a great deal, but it's nice to have. There are lots of good accessories to go with these lights. Yes, you can adapt to bounds mount, but honestly, I'm not sure that's in the spirit of what these lights can do. So for me, I like these small, discrete modifiers. And onto the cons, and the X100 battery grip only lasts 30 minutes, so personally, I would recommend sticking with mains power. You can get bundles with or without this, so personally, I would say skip it. On a side note, I was baffled with the fact that with the battery grip attached and the mains plugged in, it doesn't charge the battery grip. I mean, that I cannot get my head around. The marketing kind of suggests using these as key lights. Whilst in theory, you could do this, I would recommend using them more for fill or hair light duty. Finally, they are fair value. I'm not necessarily saying this is a con, but it's more that there's just a lot of competition in this price range. And whilst I love these lights, I'm not sure they're top of the pile. Finally, to my opinion of these, and I am a fan of Xion as a company, and I'm a fan of this Molus range. The essence of this Molus range is that power slash brightness to size ratio, and that ratio is just off the charts. Overall, I found these just kind of a joy to use. They are so easy to live with and so easy to use, and they just kind of get out of your way and do exactly what they're meant to. In fact, I said, that I said they're easy to live with. I am gonna live with the G60. I, in fact, it's taken over main duty of my, for my hair light, which you can just see here, and I'm loving it. So buy these if you need discrete lights, ones that you might want to wall mount, like I've done with my hair light. Maybe having a light that's especially small is useful for the way that you film. I'm trying to imagine what that might be, but you know, I'm sure you know. <laughs> Um, if that's the case, these are a really good choice. Don't buy these if you need a dedicated key light. I don't think they're kind of quite up to that task. And, um, you know, I'm just going to pop some really good alternatives in the description box below if that's what you're looking for. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? What other lights should I be checking out if there's some in particular you think, um, a, you know, of particular interest? Let me know. I really enjoy doing these, uh, I don't know why, these lighting videos. So yeah, let me know. I'll be in the comments as much as I can be. I'll see you down there. I've now made over 300 of these videos, can you believe it? Of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.